Tonight, we join with millions of Christians around the world remembering the work of God on the cross of Calvary. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ, God's only son, gave his life to pay the penalty for sin. Through the ages, his death stands as a testimony of God's power and grace. We remember the cross and we remember our Savior. Remembering leaves us both sad and joyful. We remember his pain and his suffering and his sacrifice with sadness. We also realize that our freedom and forgiveness and our hope are because of that same cross. And that's the joy. We remember that it is the grace of God that has made all of this possible. We remember the cross with a sense of wonder and with a sense of holy awe. And we join with all of God's church in worshiping him because he came to earth and he lived among us. He experienced death so that you and I might experience life. And this is just the beginning of our Easter weekend celebration. 
Tomorrow morning from 10 a.m. to noon is Ego Rama, preschool hunt for uh, preschoolers through fifth grade. It is going to be a lot of fun, so make sure you're here. Invite your friends to be here. And then Easter services this weekend are the exact same time as our regular services, Saturday at 5 p.m., Sunday at 8.30, 10, and 11.30. No connections classes. We just want you to come to church and celebrate Jesus and then go and spend time with your family. Easter service will be fun. It will be engaging, fast-moving, but most importantly, we will present people with the opportunity to put their faith and trust in Jesus. Tonight, as we remember Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, we give back to him. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave. Giving is an expression of love and thanksgiving to God. Just a moment as I pray, the ushers are coming forward to receive our tithes and offering. If you're watching online with us, you can give by going to firstnlr.com slash give. Would you pray with me? Lord, we set aside tonight to remember. We remember your sacrifice and we remember one of the most, if not the most pivotal moment in the history of the world. And so, Lord, we, we pause the busyness of our lives. We pause the chaos of what's gone on around us to remember, to remember your sacrifice. And, Lord, we thank you for giving your life for us. And in response to that, we give back to you. Lord, we worship you. We thank you and we give to you. It's in your mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. given me the proof I need to know I'm yours, to know I'm treasured. The love I see at Calvary that leaves no doubts, removes all questions. I couldn't be clearer, no you couldn't speak louder, your heart was on and I don't have to wonder if you're good And I don't have to worry if I'm wanted I've seen the evidence and it is more than enough And all the kindness, all the kindness of the cross Lifted high, 
call this service Remember the Cross. But as a follower of Jesus, how could you forget the cross? The cross of Jesus is the greatest moment in history. We write songs. We create art to memorialize that moment. The moment that sin and death were defeated by the power of the cross. You might look upon the death of Jesus as a great tragedy or a failure. You might ask questions like, if Jesus was so powerful, how could he be captured, tortured, and killed by his enemies? Was Jesus so weak that he was stripped, bloodied, and put on display? Well, I've got news for you. The cross was not a failure. The cross was not a surprise. The cross did not reveal Jesus' weakness. Instead, the cross declared his power. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 1.18, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. God's power over sin was on display at the cross. If you ask me, God showed out at the cross. The cross was the ultimate watch this moment. God took one man and a chunk of wood and he created a way for you and I to be saved. I call that power. And that power, the power of the cross, wasn't just on display then. It's on display every day in your life. Paul wrote in Colossians 2 that you were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. But then, God made you alive in Christ, for he forgave all our sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us, and he took it away by nailing it to the cross. And in this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities, and he shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. The cross demonstrates the severity of sin. Sin doesn't just deserve a slap on the wrist. Romans 6.23 tells us, for the wages of sin is death. That's the price. That's what we deserve. All of us. But all of that changed. When death-causing sin was met by the grace-empowered cross, death was defeated. The curse of sin was broken. Satan's plans were crushed at the cross. And it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter how bad you sinned. Whether you're old, young, black, white, fully recovered or recovering, the power of the cross is for you. The power of the cross is powerful for all. No one's exempt. Everyone is welcome. Like the old hymn says, Though millions have come, there's still room for one. There's room at the cross for you. If you've put your trust in Jesus, you're forgiven. Because of the power of the cross, you are changed. You've got a new life. You are made free. Remember the cross? Of course we remember the cross. How could we ever forget the place that our sin was paid for and forgiveness was made free. Because of Jesus' death on the cross, we have life. was redeemed, only beauty remains. My orphan heart was given a name. My morning 
morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested and my life began, oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made the power of the cross. But as we celebrate, we're also struck with a question. 
Why? Why the cross? Of, of all the ways that God could demonstrate his power to humanity, why did he choose to do so with such a cruel, sadistic, horrific experience like crucifixion? Why? Why did Jesus go through all that pain, the shame and the agony when it was you and I who deserved it? Why did Jesus take your punishment upon himself? Why? Well, Jesus endured the agony of the cross to give you what you could never have on your own. See, the power of the cross gives you access to some of God's greatest gifts Hebrews 10 says, since we have confidence by the blood of Jesus, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. Let me tell you something. There is hope in the power of the cross. It is because of the cross that you can have hope. You don't have to live a life that is filled with sin and shame with no, no purpose or future. You know, one of my favorite songs talks about that hope. And I wonder if you might sing it with me. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. If you are hopeless tonight, meaning you're living a life without hope, I have good news for you. You don't have to be hopeless anymore. If you're trapped in addiction, there is hope for freedom because Jesus broke the power of sinful addiction. If you're overcome by shame, there is hope for redemption. If your past is filled with horrible mistakes, there is hope for a brighter future as you walk with Jesus. And if your family is broken, I have good news for you. Hope is yours because God's the restorer of broken relationships. Get your hopes up. There is hope in the power of the cross. But there's also freedom in the power of the cross. You have freedom from the chains of sin that were wrapped around your life. See, sin separated us from God. And in our disobedience, we became what Paul described in Romans 6 as slaves to sin. See, Without the, the cross, we, we are slaves to sin. We are bound. We are prisoners to its, its power, and we are held captive. The battle against sin is not one you can win, not on your own. You can never, ever experience freedom on your own. You needed someone to pay the price for your redemption. And so Ephesians 1, 7 says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. I love the way you put that grace that is lavished on us. You see, because of Jesus blood, because of the cross, we have freedom from sin. That's the power of the cross. See, the cross is where God demonstrated that grace. And it wasn't just a little grace. <laughs> It wasn't just barely enough grace, but grace that is lavished on us. Grace that is extravagant. Grace that is greater than all our sin. And Jesus' death on the cross, it was not a temporary solution to sin. His blood was and is the permanent solution to sin. And that curse is broken because there is freedom in the power of the cross. Jesus bled, he died, he hung there willingly to give you access to hope and freedom. So we say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for hope. Thank you, Jesus, for freedom. And thank you, Jesus, for the blood. Now, hold on a second. 
That's good and all, but do you hear what you are yelling and clapping and cheering about? You are uh, clapping and yelling about blood. What in the world? <laughs> At no other time in your life are you standing around a puddle of blood going, Woo, I'm excited. <laughs> now, I grew up in church, so blood talk doesn't bother me very much. We grew up singing songs like, are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the lamb? Now, truth be told, we were a little bit country, so most of the time we were washed, not washed. <laughs> Some of you were too. <laughs> now, imagine knowing nothing about Good Friday, nothing about the story of Jesus, nothing about why we're here tonight, and you walk in and you hear us singing about blood that makes you white as snow and blood that reaches to the highest mountain or the lowest valley. Absent any context, well, that's just weird. How does blood make us clean? An outsider coming in has to wonder what is up with these people and their blood talk. It probably isn't just outsiders. Some of you are confused and you've been wondering, why are we so excited about a bloody cross? Because there's power in the blood, and there is power in the cross. The cross itself and its obscenity, its bloody pain-infused torture device. Were do we to watch an actual crucifixion, we would turn our head nauseous. We would be repulsed and look away. So why did God do this? Why would Jesus die and suffer in such a manner? What caused God to send his son to die like that. It's one word, love. Amen. You see, the love of God is greater than the pain that Jesus endured. Unconditional, enduring love triumphed over searing, temporary pain. Oh, the cross was ugly, but it was glorious. Oh, it was painful, but it was powerful. It was necessary. Jesus' death had to happen. Remember what we learned a moment ago. The result of sin was death. In the Old Testament, before Jesus, uh, to find forgiveness and grace, an animal was killed. It had to die to cover the sins of the people. The blood of the animal was poured out on the altar, and this happened one time a year to receive forgiveness. And done in Jerusalem by the high priest. That animal stood in for all of the people. Who had sinned, but it wasn't very effective. That even though it was a covering, sin still remained in control because the animal was just a powerless symbol. Hebrews 10 even tells us that those poor animals, they did absolutely nothing to actually change anyone's life. The sacrifice wasn't enough. The blood was just a weak symbol. But there is power in the cross and there is power in the blood. Where an animal was inadequate, Jesus was, well, more than enough. 2,000 years ago, Jesus became the ultimate sacrifice. Sin wasn't just covered, it was defeated. Jesus was not a symbol, he was the sacrifice. And his powerful blood, well, it changed us because you know what? Everything you need is in the blood. At the cross, everything changed. The cross, God turned an instrument of oppression into an instrument of liberation. Through the cross, God turned a device of torture into a masterpiece to be treasured. He turned a dead end to a new start. He turned a weapon into worship. Weeping became joy. And thanks be done to God, he turned all of us dead in our sins, hell-bound, broken people into forgiven, whole sons and daughters of Jesus Christ. My friend, there is power in the cross and there is power in the blood. And so that's why we cheer for blood tonight. Jesus, on Good Friday in Jerusalem, poured out his blood once and for all. And Jesus, when he did it, he paid it all. Your sin, 
that destroyed your life was covered by the blood of Jesus. You don't need anything else. You can stop searching. Everything you need is in the blood. You can stop trying to figure out what you're supposed to do. Everything you need is in the blood. I don't care what you've done and how many times you've done it. There is power in the cross. There is power in the blood. And you can find everything you need. on the night he was betrayed told his disciples that his life and death had to happen 
And he instructed them and instructed us to not forget. Jesus' exact words were, do this in remembrance of me. We take communion to remember what Jesus did on the cross for us. As you came in tonight, you were handed a, a wafer and a small cup of juice. If, if you didn't get one, if you raise your hand, we'll get it to you real quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, Paul wrote, I received from, from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he'd given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. There's healing in the power of the cross. Isaiah told us that Jesus' sacrifice brought healing. Isaiah 53, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Your healing was made possible through the sacrifice of Jesus. Jesus endured unspeakable pain and agony on the cross so you could be healed. In just a moment, we're going to pray for healing. I want my friend, Pastor Brennan Ayers, to come and join me and someone to hand me a mic for Brennan. We're off script here. Pastor Brennan pastors First Assembly of God in Jacksonville that was destroyed uh, one week ago today by the tornadoes. Uh, we sent money to him this week and he showed up at church tonight. I noticed him over there. I want to tell you, we may be, uh, we may have different names, but we're one church. And I'm going to ask Pastor Brendan to pray over the spread, but more specifically to pray for healing. So if you're in this room and need healing, would you just stand right where you're, right where you're at? Stand up. And if there's someone standing near you, would you stand with them? Put your hand on their shoulder. If you know them, put your arm around them. We're going to believe together as Pastor Brendan leads us in prayer. We're going to believe for healing. This can be your moment because everything you need was provided at the cross. Pastor. Fathers, we come to you tonight, Lord. We thank you and we praise you, Lord, that you were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace, Lord, was laid upon the body of Christ Jesus. And with his stripes, Lord, we are and we were completely and totally made whole yes. and made well. Now, Father, Lord, we just confess and we believe and we decree, Lord, that the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed upon the whipping post as well as the cross, Lord, was shed. And by your stripes, Lord, we ask, Lord, and we know that, Lord, you, you have already declared that we are healed. Yes. Lord, we, we, just, we just thank you for the blood of the crown of thorns because it was made for the healing of our minds. And we thank you for the piercing yes. of your side for it was made, Lord, for the brokenness of our hearts. Yes. And Lord, when our lungs, Lord, are crushed and we feel suffocated, Lord, the piercing of your side, Lord, and that blood and water which flowed, Lord, brings us life and life freely. And we thank you that you were nailed, Lord, because you were nailed. We now are nailed to the purpose, yes. Lord, of our, of our, yes. of our, of, of you, our life, Lord, that you have given us. And so, Lord, this night, Lord, I pray for each person that is in yes. this room and I proclaim healing through the blood of Jesus yes, Christ Lord. to we their bodies. You, May they Jesus. receive it now in the authority of Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Brad. And would you eat the bread together with me? The cup that you hold in your hand is a symbol. It's juice. It's not even good juice. <laughs> it's not. You'll find out in a moment. It's not special, but what it symbolizes is also very special. What we've been talking about and what we've been singing about, the blood of Jesus and his sacrifice for our sins. 
And because he died, you can be forgiven. You may have walked in here tonight, somebody tricked you into coming. <laughs> or they promised you ice cream afterwards if you'd come with them. I want to tell you why they brought you. Because they want you to experience the same freedom they've experienced. And I want to pray for you. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for his willing sacrifice. His blood was not spilled. That would be an accident. It was shed. It was intentional on purpose for us. Lord, I pray for people in this room, people watching online, who need the application of the blood to their sin. As Pastor Randy just talked about, the once and forever sacrifice sufficient for their sin. We thank you for forgiveness. We thank you that we don't have to earn it, even though we don't deserve it. But it's freely forgiven, given to us because of your sacrifice. Lord, tonight we do remember the cross with sadness, but we remember the cross with a sense of awe and wonder because of the love that was shown for us. Truly greater love hath no man than this, that he laid down his life. Thank you for laying down your life for us. And thank you for forgiveness and freedom in Jesus' name. And would you remember his blood that was shed as we drink the juice together. And now just in your own way, would you thank him? Just thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We are overwhelmed at your goodness. We're overwhelmed at your grace. Lord, we, we gather together in this place on a holy night, remembering an incredibly holy night 2,000 years ago, and we are so thankful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice. Thank you for grace. Thank you for your mercy. We worship you in Jesus' name.
more time because this is my story and this is my song and it goes I'm living proof of what the mercy of God can do because if you knew me then you believe cross but have you taken a second to just look around you do you notice how many people are in this room watching online gathered all around the world choosing to remember the cross here's what that reminds me the power of the cross is not just for one or two people it isn't just for special people or people of one race or background. It's not even for just one church. The power of the cross is for everyone. If you are white, the cross is for you. If you are black, the cross is for you. If you are Latino or Asian, anyone and everyone, the cross is for you. If you went to college, the cross is for you. If you only graduated grade school, the cross is for you. If you are poor, the cross is for you. If you are rich, the cross is for you. If you've been in church your whole life or if this is the first time you ever walked in the building, the cross is for you. If you're an immigrant, the cross is for you. Because there is more than enough room at the cross for all people. 
If you're a Republican, the cross is for you. If you're a Democrat, the cross is for you. If you're sick of it all, the cross is for you. If you're an alcoholic, the cross is for you. If you're a drug addict, the cross is for you. If you are bound by the chains of addiction, the cross is for you. If you are young, the cross is for you. If you are old, the cross is for you. If you are hopeless and hurting and broken, the cross is for you. I hope you get what I'm trying to say. The cross is for you. Last time I checked, my Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And that means that the cross is for everyone and the cross is for you. Listen to me, we may be remembering something that happened 2,000 years ago, but make no mistake, the power of the cross still works. Centuries may have passed, but the power of the cross still works. Dictators and governments have tried to stamp out the message of the gospel, but the power of the cross still works. Satan thought he had won. He thought Jesus was defeated, but the power of the cross still works. But each time you look at the cross... Let it be a reminder that Jesus thought you were worth dying for. With every blow of the whip on his body, Jesus had you on his mind and he decided that you were worth it all. As each nail was driven into his wrist and into his ankles, your name crossed his mind and he decided that you were worth it. And when he hung on the cross and he breathed his last breath, he knew that all of the pain and the suffering and the death were worth it because it was all for you and you were worth it all. So if you ever question or if you've ever allowed someone or something to convince you that you're not worthy and that you don't have value. Look to the cross. Look to the cross and remember that Jesus thought you were worth dying for. So would you just bow your heads with me? Because maybe you're here tonight, maybe you're watching online and you have found yourself in a, a place in life where where you don't feel like you have any value or any worth. And you've allowed people and circumstances and situations to convince you that you're worthless. But let my prayer for you be your reminder that Jesus has already determined how valuable you are. So Lord, I pray tonight for some people here, some people watching online who they have been broken and defeated and discouraged or for some people who have even questioned whether they should continue living on this earth. Jesus, I pray in this moment that your voice and your spirit would just speak so clearly and loudly to their heart and to their mind that you love them, that you died for them, that everything you did on the cross was for them and no person and no situation could ever rob them of the value that you've already determined. Lord, I pray your spirit would just comfort them, that you would wrap your arms around them and they would feel the love of God in a way that they have never felt it before. Lord, we thank you. 
We thank you because when we look to the cross, we can remember that you decided we were worth it. So much so that you would die for us. So Lord, never let us forget the value and the worth that you've placed on us. And may we walk in the confidence in the hope because we have you and it's all because of the cross. Lord, we thank you that you decided we were worth it, that we were worth dying for, that we were worth everything you went through. And it's in your mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. You thought I was worth saving So you came and changed my life You thought I was worth keeping So you cleaned me up inside You thought I was to die for So you sacrificed your life So I could be free So I could be
Aren't you grateful for the love of Jesus? Thank you so much for being here tonight to remember the cross. Remember this weekend, we'd love to see you for services, Saturday, 5 o'clock, Sunday morning at 8.30, 10, and 11.30. We love you. Have a great weekend.